Hello, my name's Nancy and I'm here with another needle felting tutorial and today we're going to do a spooky jack-o-lantern face. Recently I've done a couple of tutorials. One is on a basic pumpkin and I apologize I'm not sure how to put a link but if you would care to look that up that would be a good tutorial for a beginner of how to do a pumpkin. And then I have one of how to do just a basic jack-o-lantern face and that would be great for beginners if you would like to look those up they should be on YouTube and before we get started today make sure you got your uh, supplies you can use your uh, needle felting pad if you'd like not necessary but if you're comfortable using it now I put a towel over mine I have a lamp here and it kind of puts a glare and also I found with a towel since I have a slick tabletop um, the towel, when I set the pumpkin on the towel, kind of helps keep it from rolling around. Then you're going to want your single needle. This one I got out of my first ever kit from Michaels. You're going to want a little bit of a uh, black roving. You don't need too much. And then, of course, you're going to need your straight pins. Now, you might remember these from Home Ec. These are the kind that have the uh, rubber, I think it's rubber, colored heads. And these are the ones I recommend you use because it makes you easier to see them on the pumpkin as you're needle felting. Now, me and myself, uh, I can visualize jack-o'-lanterns in my mind, but then I have trouble getting the vision, you know, down to the pumpkin. So what I've done is uh, I recently went online and I just looked up a bunch of pictures of jack-o'-lanterns and I came up with this one for a reference. I really like that. And as I was practicing, I had gone ahead and made this guy here. So I'm just going to use him as my reference. Alrighty, and bear with me a moment. Pardon me for the interruption. My husband was texting me. Pardon. One moment, I'm going to move around the table. I'm going to switch chairs here. It's just easier for me to move over here. Makes it uh, easier for me to demonstrate what we're doing here. Alrighty, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and take this guy here. Now, I've already jumped ahead a little bit. And I have gone ahead and started the outline. This is for the sake of just uh, saving time. I've only got so much uh, recording time on my uh, on my camera here, so I went ahead and jumped ahead a little bit. Now, if you did watch my uh, video with the uh, learning how to do a basic outline, you are already aware of the straight pin method. And simply, what it is is taking your straight pins and outlining the face. Now one thing I do, I have found is a lot easier, is go ahead and do your mouth first because you might go ahead and you know do your eyes and do your nose and all that. And then after you get done, you might realize, hey, wait a minute, I put those like too low and then your mouth is like way down here. Well, obviously you don't want the mouth on the bottom of the pumpkin. So I find it's easy to go ahead and do the mouth first to make sure it's up where you want. And then if you want the nose, do a nose. If you don't want the nose, then just go ahead and do your eyes. And uh, I find that's a lot easier. Just go ahead and do the mouth first. Now when I do the mouth, as you can see, I do the outline first. And sometimes these pins don't always cooperate. Now this doesn't have to be exact. Now, if you like to be symmetrical, you can do this, you know, in a symmetrical manner. If they're a little bit off-center, you know, you might want to go for uh, a goofy look. Like I said, if you watched my other video, that was just a basic face. You could always go for goofy. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. Now, me and myself, I, I like to try to be symmetrical when possible, but not always necessary. And that is the one thing that is fun about jack-o'-lanterns is if you notice that different carvings or if you've done one yourself, sometimes they're not always, you know, perfectly symmetrical. 
and that's part of the fun of jack-o'-lanterns. Now the good thing about the straight pin method here is that you can actually you know move your pins around. So after you do your basic face you might want to hold it back look at it and you might be oh wait a minute this eye is like whoa way too big. You can make this eye smaller you can make that one bigger to match. Now what I do for teeth, since I've already got the outline of the mouth, for jagged teeth, you're just going to make just triangles, which is, you know, just a simple concept. Just make some triangles here. Now what I do is I do one triangle at a time. And you will notice as I'm putting in my pins, do not put them like all the way flush to the pumpkin because actually when you go to do your uh, your felting by having them you know like stick I hope you can see that by having them out just a little bit it makes it easier to see uh, your outline now what I do after I do a tooth is pull out these guys here and that just kind of gives you a better visual all right and there we go that is one tooth Hey, this guy is going to fall over. He's not cooperating. <laughs> but that is one tooth there. Alrighty. I went ahead and jumped ahead a little bit here. And went ahead and put a couple more teeth in. I went ahead and put one there. And then I put this guy over here. Now I'm not doing as many uh, teeth as my reference. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, it's easier just, you know, just do a couple for you. All right, and this guy is going to just keep falling over, so. All right, now, what I'm going to do is uh, just demonstrate the nose. And I find it's easier just to, you know, take a piece of roving. And actually, you don't need that much. When you're getting ready to do uh, faces, details, whatever, um, always try to take off a little bit less than what you really, really, really think you need. Because you can always start out with just a little bit, and then you can always add more. Now what I do is I'm folding this over and over inside itself to help eliminate the fuzzies. Then what I try to do, if possible, is try to kind of make the shape of the part that I'm filling in. What I'm trying to do here is, it's kind of hard to see, I'm trying to make a triangle. And then it makes it easier to fit in the nose. Now as you can see there, I kind of made that a little bit too big. So I'm going to try and make it a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter. I'm just kind of folding it in amongst itself. Just trying to make it tighter. Just folding in the fuzzies. Making my nose a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller. And then I'm just setting it inside the pins. Okay, kind of holding it with my thumb there. Take my needle. Now all you got to do is I'm going beside, see I'm going beside my thumbnail here so I'm not poking myself. And just give yourself a good, get yourself a good tack going. Now, there we go. Go ahead and pull that pin out. Pull this guy out just a little bit. There we go. Just makes it easier to see them. If you go ahead and just pull them out a little bit. There we go. Now once you get yourself a good tack going, Get this tack down, you can actually move your thumb out of the way. Now what I'm doing here, this is over the border of the outline. Just take your needle and pull in your fuzzies. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and pull this guy out. There we go, so I can see him. There we go. And as you're tacking down your roving, just take your needle. Any fuzzies that are hanging outside the border, just pull them in with your needle and tack them down. And that's the basics. There we go. Now once you get yourself a good tack down going, and it seems to be holding, you might, just want to take a, you might want to take an extra minute here. Then what you can do is go ahead and pull out your pins. Once you get yourself a little tack down going, because if you go ahead and move your pins now, it just kind of helps you, you know, to keep from bumping into them. And just go ahead and 
modified your pins. There we go. And there's your nose. Oh, got some fuzzies here. Just kind of bend them down with your needle. There we go. Alrighty, and there's your nose. Now if you'll notice there, I kind of cut off a little bit of a corner. I'm just taking just like a teeny, teeny little piece, just kind of like rolling it into a ball. I'm just going to fill in that corner that I missed there. There we go. I'm just kind of fill in that corner. Now I'm just going to, beside my thumbnail there so I'm not poking myself. All right, now I'm filling in the corner. Now see I went way over, but I can take my needle and pull it in. There we go. Okay, tack that down, pull that in. There we go. All right, and just taking your needle. You can guide your roving up to where you want it and tack it down. There you go, and that's the basics of your nose. Alrighty, now I went ahead and skipped ahead just a little bit more there and went ahead and did one eye. Now what I'm going to do for the second eye is tear off just a little bit uh, more roving than I did for the nose. Just a little bit. I said you really don't need that much. And once again, I'm kind of like just, just folding in the fuzzy parts here. Just kind of folding it in on itself. And just kind of trying to make the shape of the eye. The trick here though is try to get your fuzzies folded in as much as possible. It's not going to be perfect, but just kind of helps. All right, it's not going to be exact. And then, go ahead and pull my pins out just a bit here. And then show, just try to set your roving inside the pins. You can kind of maneuver it around a little bit. And I said if your pins are already pulled out a little bit, that makes it easier too. There we go. Right now I'm just holding that with my finger. Now I'm going along my uh, fingernail here, so I'm not I'm not poking myself because my fingernail's there. And just start tacking down. Get yourself a good get yourself a good tack down going first. Move your finger a little bit out of the way. You can pull in your fuzzies as you're doing your tack. Start tacking down. And, like I said, as you're felting, you're pulling in your fuzzies from the outside. Sometimes it helps just to hold it down a little bit with your finger. There you go. And once you start develop, developing a little bit of speed, it goes a little faster. Pulling in your fuzzies. There you go. And get it felted down. And then once you get a good tack down going, you could always pull out your pins, and that'll help increase your speed. There we go. There you go. And then all you got to do is pull out your pins, and you can just really go to town and start. And you can start tacking. You know, start felting it down a lot faster when your pins are out of the way, and after you pull. Pull out your pins too. You can, you know, see where you missed fuzzies, and you can pull those in and make a smoother edge. Now I find too, as you're pulling out your pins, put your little container like right beside you. That way you're not reaching across the table to put them away. Okay, and as you can see there, I've still got some fuzzies. I'm just taking my needle, pulling them in. And felting down. And that's how you do your basic eyes. Okay, now I'm going to show you the basics of how to do a mouth. 
And one little trick I've developed is pulling off just a piece of roving about like that. I said don't need much. Actually, it's a little bit thin. Pull out just a bit more here. Now I find it's easier. Kind of twist it just a little bit. Now I take the fuzzy ends, kind of bend them over, and just kind of like twist it with my fingers. Twist it tightly. That helps eliminate some fuzzies. Then come around to your other end, fold it over, and then just twist it with your fingers. And this helps eliminate your fuzzies. Makes it easier. All right, get your fuzzies eliminated. And then what I'm gonna do here, since this is kind of a long piece, I'm gonna lay it right about there. All right, and the pins are kind of help, helping to hold it in place. There we go. Just hold it with your finger and just start tacking down. Using your needle to get any uh, fuzzies that went out of the outline there. And just start tacking down. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to fill it in with a lot more roving. But what you want to do here is just get yourself a good basic tack down going. And once you get it to hold a little bit, there you go. Like I said, any fuzzies that got out of the, got out of the outline, go ahead and just pull them in with your needle. There you go. Got that started. Okay, this guy is just going to insist on rolling forward, so <laughs> we'll just let him do that. Now what I've got here is I've already got a piece. I've already pre-done it. All right, we're going to put you there for the upper. All right, just start tacking down. I said it doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. Okay, and what you could do is just bend it a little bit. There you go. Bend it in. There we go. Got yourself a good basic outline going. All right. All right, we'll just set him up like that. And I've got myself another piece here. Now what we could do is just lay this along the tooth. Bend it up. All right. Kind of fiddly there. And I'm just holding that with my finger. All right. Okay, now that's sliding down. What you can do is take your ne needle. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> take your needle. Encourage it to go back up to where you wanted it. There you go. And just start tacking down. All right. There's the pin I missed. Pull him out. There we go. Start tacking down. There we go. Just start tacking down your outline. Any fuzzies that went outside the outline, pull them in with your needle. There we go. And that's how you can start doing your basic outline. Alrighty. Okay, got most of the outline done here. Gonna do just a little bit more. Now I've got like a really long piece here. Now what I can do is I'm just holding it with my thumb. Just getting a good tack down going. Not wanting to cooperate today. All right, there we go. Getting myself a good tack down going. Got to pull out my pins. I said it does always make it easier to pull out your pins first. There we go. Get yourself a good tack down going. All right. And what we're doing here is just following along the pins. All right. Now this guy's going to be a little fiddly here. Just go ahead and pull him up. I'm just holding him with my thumb. All right. And just encourage him over to the outline. All right, now he's a little bit longer here. 
Go ahead and bend them down. Okay, there's a couple of pins. Pull those out. There we go. All right, pull those guys out. And that just makes it so much easier to outline the mouth and eliminates all those excess fuzzies that you have to fight with. And then after you do that, all you need to really do is get yourself some roving. It really doesn't need to be that much. Kind of fold it over amongst itself a little bit. Eliminate some of the fuzzies. And then just fill in your blank spots. And overlapping is also a good idea. That just helps cover up any bald spots you might have. So overlapping is fine. And it does make your mouth come out you know, darker, come out blacker. Cover up any bald spots there. Tack that down. All right, you got just a little spot there, so you need just a little bit. Don't, I said don't need that much. Take just a little bit, kind of fold it over amongst itself a little bit. Tuck it into the bald spot there. Hold it with your thumb. Take your needle, guide it in. All right, there's a pin that got away from us. Pull that out. And I'm holding it with my thumb, but I'm going along my thumbnail so I'm not poking myself. There we go, tack that down. There's another pin got away from us. There we go. And then just fill in the blank spot over here. A little bit more roving. Go, you can go a little bit bigger if you want. Not necessary, but gives you more coverage. There we go. Fill in the blank spot there. Right now, I wasn't too fancy with that, so I ended up with some fuzzies. But I can just pull those in with the needle. Just start tacking down. Okay, look for my pins. All right. Pins kind of got away from me. There we go. Pull them up where I can see them. Just start tacking down. Pull in your fuzzies. Just start tacking down. I said I didn't get that fancy with this. I could have, should have done it a little bit neater. My apologies. But for the sake of demonstrations, you can see how I'm doing it here. I said keep my, try to keep your pins pulled out where you can see them. That helps. Especially against the black. There we go. One got away from me there. And what you're going to do after you... Get yourself a good tack down going. All it is now is a matter of going back and just felt, 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 and get that felted down as flat as you can. And there we go. That is your basic spooky jack-o'-lantern face. And like I said, the guy on the right has more teeth. I've only got a couple of teeth over here. But, like I said, that's the fun of jack-o'-lanterns is you can make them how you want to. As many teeth as you want. And you can make them uh, symmetrical. You can make them, you know, lopsided. However you want to make them. That's the fun of jack-o'-lanterns is you can make it your own. Alrighty, and that wraps up the jack-o'-lantern video. I hope you enjoyed it. it. I would greatly appreciate it if you would like to watch my other videos. How to Needle Felt a Basic Pumpkin and the Basic Jack-O-Lantern Face. That would be great. Like I said, they would also be great for beginners. And I hope I was able to, you know, teach you a few techniques here on my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're, you know, a beginner, you know, just keep on practicing. Don't ever give up. I mean, I'm still new at it. I still make mistakes, but it is so much fun. And the more you practice, well, the better you'll get. All right? And y'all have a nice day, and happy felting.